NACDL's Champion of Justice Awards are bestowed upon those individuals who, through legislative, legal, journalistic, or humanitarian pursuits, have staunchly preserved or defended the constitutional rights of American citizens and has endeavored to ensure justice and due process for persons accused of crime. Tonight, I've got the honor of presenting the Champion of Justice Legal Award to a lawyer who is a model for all of us. Our colleague and friend, Rick Jones. Few, few have achieved what Rick has accomplished in the courtroom, in the leadership of a major defender organization, and as a visionary bar leader. He has dedicated years of service to raising the quality of indigent defense for the residents of Harlem, New York, and to advocating for the improvement of indigent defense systems throughout the nation. He's the executive director and founding member of the Neighborhood Defender Services of Harlem. Since its founding more than 20 years ago, the Neighborhood Defender Service has gained national and international recognition for its innovative, community-based approach to public service and public defense. And Rick has been a leader of those efforts, taking the NDS to new heights and always striving to find new and more efficient means to meet the needs of every single client, comprehensively and creatively. But more than that, Rick has helped redefine the role of a bar leader and the mission of, organized, of the organized bar. While he has served in many leadership capacities, such as chair of our indigent defense and as an officer, it is not the title that defines Rick, but the content of this work. Nothing better defines that content than his leadership of two of the most important projects ever undertaken by NACDL or perhaps any other bar association. His work as co-chair of the Task Force on the Problem Solving Courts, and more recently as co-chair of the Task Force on the Restoration of Rights has been transformational for NACDL and perhaps the nation. Rick's work took him to more than a dozen cities around the country, presiding over public hearings where scores of witnesses provided direct testimony of issues of preeminent concern to the cause of justice in America. He led an unprecedented partnership between volunteer leaders and the professional staff that has catapulted NACDL into the forefront of the national movement to restore rights. And although, and though it's all, his focus, and through it it's all, his focus has been on the human impact of failed policies. He has not shrunk from the confronting the ugly reality of ethnic and racial disparity in the criminal justice system nor has he even for one moment failed to deliver the message of hope. He's delivered this message on the behalf of the NACDL with vigor, with compassion, and with conviction. He's addressed the media, the community, and Congress. Rick has not only led in these efforts, but he's been NACDL's public face of reform. Recently speaking in Chicago before the National Black Chamber of Commerce, Rick summed up the three years of work that he and his colleagues put in the Restoration of Rights Task Force when he said, the time has come to change our national mindset, to move away from the endless prosecution and lifetime punishment. The time has come to move Forward toward forgiveness, redemption, and the restoration of rights and status. Those are the words of an inspiring colleague who is the NACDL's secretary today. He will be NACDL's vice president tomorrow, 
and he is a champion of justice forever. And so, on the night when we are celebrating Liberty's last champions, guardians of the Constitution, it is fitting that we honor Rick Jones with the NACDL's Champion of Justice Award. Come on up, Nick. So let me let me just say right off right off the bat that you know my uh, my mother and my brother are here and I'm not I'm not really big on the special occasions as you can see I'm the only person after dinner who isn't wearing a tux but since I had to shave twice today and my mother's in the audience. I think this is a special occasion. I just want to say right off the bat that I'm very, I'm very proud of my younger brother who's here who has accomplished great things and is going to continue to do so. And I don't really want to go all Kevin Durant on you, but <laughs> my mom has been there with my brother and I every step of the way. And, and I'm, I'm very happy that she's here tonight, and I'd just like you to give her a round of applause. <clears throat> what, a, what a great night. Kudos to Ted and the planning committee and everyone else involved in pulling off this evening. And what a, what a treat for me to be honored alongside Cynthia Orr. Uh, no one has worked harder or been more committed to NACDL than, than Cynthia has. And, and Jerry Cox. Jerry Cox is a good man. He really is. Jerry Cox is a good man. He was honored as Lawyer of the Year in Kentucky this year. He's probably been Lawyer of the Year for the last 25 years in Kentucky. And we have been happy and lucky and fortunate to have him as NACDO's president this year. Let's give it up for Jerry Cox. When, when Jerry told me that he wanted to give me this award, the, the champion of justice, I literally had to stop and, and ask myself, uh, justice, is that still a thing? And if it is still a thing, then I'm certainly not the champion of it, because I rarely see it. But I work at an incredible place called the Neighborhood Defender Service of Harlem. And some of you may know it. So when I do see justice, it's in the work of my colleagues at NDS, who, in my estimation, are true heroes and who save lives every day. In fact, the motto of our office is making justice a reality for those farthest from its reach. And when I do see justice, it's in the work of Norm and the staff at NACDL. And I just have to take a point of personal privilege to also, they're all wonderful, but to also mention Angeline Frazier, who has been with me for the last several years and who is just phenomenal. You should know. And I'm here to tell you that NACDL has changed the criminal justice landscape in this country. From reforms in discovery, forensics, eyewitness identification, and our drug laws, 
to the Clemency Project and Indigent Defense, to combating overcriminalization, collateral consequences, and ending racial disparity, NACDL has changed the debate. And make no mistake, the work that you do, the work that each of you does on the board, on committees, as members, as practitioners, matters. Your work and the work of NACDL is changing the national mindset on crime, and punishment in this country. There is a momentum shift underway. The Attorney General came here and spoke to you this morning. The pendulum is beginning to swing ever so slowly from mass arrest, prosecution, and endless punishment to forgiveness, redemption, and restoration. So keep up the fight. The tide is turning. But mostly, when I see justice, when I see righteousness, it's in the faces of the people we represent every day. 68 million people in this country living with a conviction. That's more than the entire population of France. 14 million new arrests every year. 2.2 million people 2.2 million people will sleep in a prison cell tonight, more than anywhere else on earth. Most of them are black or brown, overwhelmingly poor. They face injustice every day. They face oppression every day. They can legitimately ask, does justice exist? But the thing that keeps me going, and I've, as Jerry said, I've been all over the country listening to people. The thing that gives me go keeps me going as I listen to folks is that they never give up hope. Their spirit never dies. They never quit fighting. And neither should we. And neither can we. It's for their struggle that we do what we do. And it's for their struggle that NACDL exists. And it's for their struggle that I accept this award tonight. Thank you.